Hey guys, it's Joe from Digital Phantom, and in this series, we're gonna sh uh, learn how to create, or I'm gonna show you how to create um, a captcha, your own custom made captcha to protect your website from uh, computers trying to access areas, like for example, a forum or a member base area where you only want your members to access it and you don't want that thing listed on the web like like crawlers uh, access your website and if they don't have a captcha and they get a username or something they can really easy get um, access to that content that you don't want them to see so that's why we make it harder for them to get to that area I mean they could decode this but you know this would uh, stop them or prevent them from getting easy access to it so let's get started with this so I found this font at dafont.com d-a-f-o-n-t dot com it's called anonymous clippings and it's pretty random characters so it will make them really hard to find what that font is because we're gonna customize it also so we're gonna create something similar to what you see on the screen here at the bottom. So let's get started with that. Um, here I have this file, and then it's uh, we don't need this anymore. We're go I'm gonna put that link on the description of the video so you could um, download it and work with it. So localhost uh, tutorials captcha oops capture okay so empty that's good and then we're gonna do new text document and then we're gonna rename this text document to capture oops sorry that's c-a-p-t c-h-a oops that that come <laughs> that's sort of yes okay and then now we're gonna copy this file and paste it so what I did was press control C and then control V as in vector to paste it uh, rename I'm gonna rename this index.php oops sorry index.php anyways it doesn't matter so let's uh, open the notepad plus plus here okay I have notepad plus plus and let's edit this with these two with notepad plus plus good I have it well I have notepad plus plus on the other screen but I'm gonna bring it right here right now so let's uh, bring it okay here it is that one let me close this uh, plugin here because we don't need it. And let's also bring the index here. Okay, good. So we, what we're going to do here is on the captcha.php, we're going to make a class called captcha. And this first part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, declare all the methods on, the, on that class. And I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what they will do. And we'll get an introduction of what that class is going to do that's going to help us on the next video um, basically uh, work with it faster so class captcha then open curly braces and close curly braces and then we're going to have uh, some fields and of course this, oops private yeah and then these fields are going to be static. I'm going to explain to you why it's static. Static and captcha. How many some from spelling captcha? <laughs> captcha equals and then underscore underscore captcha underscore underscore. That's what captcha is. So I'm going to teach you a little trick on on Notepad plus plus. If you have your your cursor in one line you you don't have anything selected I press control D you duplicate that line and I'm gonna do this to work faster 
So we're gonna declare that field captcha, another field another field font, and then we don't need that default value for it. Let's duplicate it with default value is gonna be 70. That's gonna be the width of the of the capture or the image height height default value 70. I'm gonna duplicate this again and then the font size. Oops, <laughs> I changed the places. Switch the order of the characters, the letters. So font size, I'm gonna say that 40. It's a fairly good size for the font I'm gonna use. And then we're gonna put character width. This is gonna it's gonna give the spacing between each character on the on the captcha. Okay. So uh, the captcha we're gonna store it in a session, and that uh, session it's gonna be in the in the server. So that way, when the user submits the form, we know that the user that the, the the input is the right one because the previous value of the captcha that was generated was stored in the session. So we're gonna create a private method called session start and then I'm going to tell you what that's going to do. Another method is uh, a method that would set the font that this uh, uh, that this uh, captcha it's going to use. In this case we're going to use the anonymous clippings. So private static function oops set underscore font oops okay another method that we're going to use is a method that would allow the user to actually the order of this method doesn't matter but um, a method that I would think that's going to help is that will allow the user to get the captcha image so public function uh, get actually not get let's put it by default capture image and this needs to be static also static and the other method is the method that would allow the user to get the value of the previous capture generated so public function oops, static function get underscore code okay good okay but we also need more fonts more I mean not more fonts sorry we need more functions or more methods so uh, since we're going to be generating a random uh, a random um, string that is going to include lowercase letters capital letters and numbers um, I'm thinking that we could build a function public function get random and this would return uh, a random capital letter or a random lowercase letter or a random number from 0 to 9 and then public function oops static function so the one on top should be static too so I'm gonna fix that uh, get not get generate code and why is that public it shouldn't be public it should be private why is the capital private okay good this should be private too so the reason I'm making this private is because I don't want the user to basically do like captcha equals new Captcha. I don't want the user to ever do that. Since I'm using static methods, the user would do is like, for example, if he he wants to put the image, he will put uh, like you can put outside of this uh, image tag source C equals then question 
uh, question marks and then you can use the PHP shorthand version to put capture capture and then image and the previous tutorial show you how to embed the image in the image source or in the HTML document so what this would do is actually show that image so the user doesn't have to do any extra thing and then on the validation you could put let's say the user has to enter something on the on the form you could put uh, let's say post code actually let's do validation if post code equals equals to make sure that they're both equals then captcha get code then you would echo true in this case the it it matches so that's essentially what we're gonna do so let's delete this because we don't need it and let's also delete this because we don't need it right now and it's not gonna be used there so also we have to set I like to set this methods private get with oops static function so in order for not to access the with value directly then private static function get height okay that's good okay so let me see if we're missing another method um, have the session start set font the get random the generate code the set get width get height image and get code okay that's good so let's go to the index one and PHP check this require once could do require but um, capture oops capture that PHP oops okay let's test out if to see if this works uh, let's go um, capture the image and now let's open the browser to see if we got any errors oops on line 11 not good something that did wrong okay what's going on here I don't see anything wrong we guess see anything wrong I don't see it unexpected t string line 11 I must have missed a coma somewhere I really don't know what's going on here oh yeah public static what function and here also private static yeah I need to review these things and sometimes it's easy to find those errors I think I made everything right but that really is not the case okay so that's good okay before I we finish this tutorial uh, last time I showed you how to uh, how to embed the, the an image into the HTML document right so let's um let's do that with a font okay so if you guys haven't downloaded this of course I didn't tell you but you have to download this I already downloaded it and I'm gonna put it in the same directory that we have all these files okay so I have this in the same directory now and then what I'm gonna do is basically view the source of this page to see what we have and then let's uh, work with this file this index.php file 
I'm gonna do echo and then I'm gonna put um, base 64 encode actually no uh, file get contents and then she put the file name of the font so let's right click rename see this is just one one time you have to do this and then you can forget about include the font anywhere you have it you have everything embedded into the file okay that's good and let's uh, refresh this okay so what we have there is the font file embedded or the source of the font file it's actually embedded here it's actually all this so let's select all this control A and then control C and then let's go ahead and go to the capture and then we just set font we can put uh, the font name as a variable name. No. Animals clippings equals and then single quotes. And then that's good. So we actually have the font embedded into that. And the reason for doing this is that uh, this set font would actually create a temporary file with this font that is going to be used to generate the image and then it's going to delete it afterwards and some of you guys might criticize me for this because this increases file size a lot you see this file size it's 303 kilobytes whereas this one is 132 bytes but actually this would prevent few from from getting to let's say you have an old website and you want to include this same capture on the other website so you might have to take these two files and uh, move them both to the same directory so in order for the script to work whereas this you can just use this PHP file and it will work anywhere so that's why I'm doing this it increases the file size but it, it gets the, the job done so um, this concludes the first part of this tutorial. In the next part, we're going to be building all these functions and we're going to be working on this on more details. I hope this is going to be a two part series, not a three part. So, hopefully, in the next part, we're going to have everything ready. So, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, also, uh, follow me on Twitter at Digital Phantom and like my face on Facebook. Uh, it's also Digital Phantom. So, see you guys next time.